We are back. We are back. We are back. Um, I'm really excited for for this session. Um, we're closing out the festival with a bang. I am really, really, really excited for this um, session. And the reason why is, to be fair, when I think about it, we've been blessed to have like top tier guests right um and yes we're continuing the standard and the levels um with this session we have got how do i describe this guy uh multi-hyphenate um astute businessman um actor producer i'm sure he directs and writes but maybe gets other people too because he doesn't have the time um and you know what just the all-round great guy i would also say like um he's 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 got great vision um and he's a sponge for 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 learning which i, I think definitely requires like a um like a spirit and a heart of humility um which is only going to continue to take him further um alongside his his um amazing business partners but i introduce to you guys purcell ascot hey <laughs> Uh, thank you for having me man that was that was a really like beautiful introduction so i really yeah do appreciate that that was wicked <laughs> we we thank you for um for for being here um so i'm gonna jump straight into it right um like this session is really about because you do so many things um and you do them well and at a high like a really significantly high level um we really just want to get into how how you do that to be fair because i guess there's a lot of stigma um especially like years ago of you know yeah you can do loads of things but you may not do all mm. of them well or something's gonna <laughs> suffer um mm. so yeah i'm just gonna um I'm just going to jump into it, right? So I guess my first point is like, look, you run a multi-million pound business. Um, you act, you produce, you manage um, acts as well. Um, all of this stuff, like it didn't happen overnight. So what was like your first experience of having to do more than one thing? Um, that's such a good question. Um, I would take myself back to when I was in Brit school, um, when I was training to be an actor. Uh, that's where I met Javan and um, we were at school and we were looking at what the next opportunity was for us at the time it was obviously looking at university or drama school and me and Javan just knew we just knew we didn't want to go and um, in fact what we did we did a part-time course at the school which was called year 14 and this would be like our first year at, at university or drama school but you know we opted to stay at Brit school for this extra year which was a part-time course so we got to do, um, you know, uh, basically create a play in that time. And at the same time, we had like a part time job and we then discovered, you know, our, our, our first project, which is Man on the Wall. Mm. And when I was doing Man on the Wall Javan at the same time as still trying to keep up with uh, school and and even work commitments and stuff, that was the first, I think, entry level of just trying to like manage and balance. I remember like there was a time where we was in uh, we, come, we came to lesson and we both had just done a whole night just of full of, of full of writing and I think editing as well and just mapping things out. And we got to, I think we got to sleep at like five or 6 a.m. School started at, you know, eight or nine. So only two hours sleep. And it was the yeah, first time I'm coming to school. I'm fatigued. I'm so tired. And uh, yeah, our teacher just, we fell asleep, unfortunately, um, through, the, through the lesson. And our teacher made a comment about it, but but she didn't know what we had gone and what we was doing the night before. She felt like, you know, we were maybe just hanging out or partying or whatever it was. But these times, obviously, we were doing so much work behind the scenes. And, you know, uh, it was like it was so hard to explain that to people. It was so hard to explain that to family, to friends, to everybody, really. Um, and even I actually go back a little bit more when I was 16 I um, founded my first business, which was a book selling business. And um, I used to sell books. So I used to get books from charity shops for like say 50p and I sold them on Amazon for say two pounds. And then I did that just in big quantities. Um, and I was 16 years old doing it all by myself. And um, I had to stay up until 4 a.m. again, like just packing all, the, all of these books into boxes and then shipping it to Amazon for them to sell, sell it on my behalf as part mm. of like this Amazon F system. Mm. And it was very, very new at the time. So I was I was doing all right in terms of making a little bit of money, £600 every sort of fortnight from selling mm. all these books, basically. 
And uh, yeah, again, it was just like the first part of um, myself, like balancing different things. And I think working with Javan, that was a big thing of just learning how to like, not only be in a team, but also, yeah, like work out which, what responsibilities we're looking after, but making sure that we execute. Like if we make a plan, you know, and we're doing what we're going to say we're going to do, we're delivering on it as well. And I think very early on as well, we had a, we had a perfection, you know, to um, the execution. So anything we were doing, we has to turn to gold. Like it was Madame Monoval. We, we, you know, reshot the first episode three times. If it was um, any of the short films that we've done, like we, we will, I will constantly, you know, go and do more takes if, if, if need be. Um, a lot of the, lot of the films that me and Jovan have done and acted in together, we sometimes like direct it, you know, direct each other. In fact, you know, um, on, 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 on those projects because we know each other's potential. So, constantly we'd always work on um one balancing and maintaining like multiple things um from an early age and also at the same time we had to make sure that whatever we were balancing still has that touch of greatness and that gold to it because it just was a pride thing it was like I can't if, if I'm gonna put my name by this we have to be proud of it basically and it's it's yeah like do or die that we have to make sure that we go hard basically <laughs> I love that. I love that. That attention to detail is um and that willingness to to redo is quite interesting, right? Because yeah. I want to know from your perspective, what's the fine line or what's the balance between being perfect or getting things done perfectly and then but it's like, but we still have to get it done. Yeah, I I think um I think there's a there, there is, yeah, like you mentioned, there's a fine line, right? There's a fine line for me. I've learned that there's um too many creatives I feel fail to execute you know they fail to actually like release a lot of the stuff that they're doing and obviously I mentioned to you that you know we we made sure things were perfect but perfect uh, to, to our control there's obviously elements that we couldn't control there's, there's things that I wish I had the budget for that I could do properly and and do it once over however I can only make this as good as I can make it and 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 after that that that's the the best thing I can possibly make it then I'm proud of myself I've tried um, and I think that's the balance. It's also like not to be too indulgent, I think, as well as an artist. I think that's one of the big thing I talk to a lot of people in my circles and other circles as well. It's like sometimes as artists, we can be so like um, so passionate, but so uh, what's the word? I guess so. We're just scared to release this, this our, our, you know, to express ourselves, our art to the world because of critique and, and, and criticism. But that's the only way that we're going to learn, basically. So I find that like, there's a way to like just you know step back like I think once I've done everything I can to whatever this thing I'm making whether it be something that we're producing for some of the brands that we've 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 made content for or if it's the film side of things or even if it's I'm just doing a scene on on set and I'm acting it's like I can just as long as I've tried and I've given it my all then I feel like it's filtered enough ready for the world to basically experience and enjoy and of course there's going to be lessons along the way and I think like you mentioned earlier it's about being open to learning like every project we've ever done I don't think we've ever settled or or, or complacency is a, is a word that we're very scared of it's, it's like we're very scared of being complacent to oh this is the standard and we've we've hit that now no it's like okay how how else can we we always have our debrief sessions how else can we you know work on this project again but do it in a different way maybe there's maybe like you know pros and cons that we can you know adapt to to the process basically so yeah that's what I'd say Wow, 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 wow. You know, um, speaking of learning, right? Um, and just looking at the quality of what you guys do and even like your craft of of acting, right? Um, the reason mm -hmm. I say that is because when I watch you on screen, you embody the character. Um, like I'll take I'll I'll even take Shiro's story, for example. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like, and I'm you. You've probably had this, uh, uh, like, <laughs> have this feedback so so often. But yeah. you really like you transformed mm. into Kyle. Mm. Mm. You were him from the gold tooth, even like the way you were speaking and like small man. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you're him. That's it not is. even like you can't. You cannot <laughs> see the nice guy per se <laughs> like you can't, it doesn't exist anymore like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? and yeah. <laughs> I guess I guess like doing things to that quality mm. right um mm. definitely requires like time learning and practice mm. but with regards to like the learning aspect like how does that take shape for you um 
with regards to acting and producing is it like courses is it like yeah um I think it's a lot of um I, I study a lot of myself I think and observe a lot of things as I'm doing certain projects so I think even like the the, the film that Shara story mm. there's been moments in my past where I've done a, say a similar type of work or similar type of project or even more so I, I kind of connect to like the emotion of what the character is going through and I, I think that the emotions for me is what I feel like makes the character feel real and more rounded um and that's what makes it feel like the, the, your speech the patterns everything changes your face everything has to like like it just molds itself into this person because I, I'm so connected to understanding them and understanding their why understanding what their drive is and when I'm so in in touch with that as Paso Ascot you know it makes yeah. it easy for me to transition over to like obviously to to feel as passionately as what as how Kyle feels to whatever the subject matter is yeah. um and I think I've always, um, I think of every role and every project I've ever done, I've always uh, taken a lesson from every scene, you know. And I think, um, again, it goes back to like when I first started acting, um, doing Wizards versus Aliens on CBBC, mm. that was the first time ever I was working on a job for, say, four months working on that, right? And it was, it was hard because I was, you know, 18 and living away from home, filming in Cardiff. But I had to like, learn that every day is almost like a brick that I'm layering and almost it's like I think uh, Andrew Garfield and a few other actors have spoken about this in in different podcasts that I've listened to but you know you look at your actors your your your, uh, your you know characters arc basically and I I almost look at like okay every day that I'm in in terms of the schedule this is a piece that I'm layering that's going to get me closer and closer to building this like full this full character and um that that kind of helped a lot and and also just doing the CBBC stuff, doing a lot of, I, even when I was younger, I did like jobs and casualty. And I, I went for a year of just saying yes to everything because I wanted to learn. I just wanted to like challenge myself, whether it be a short film, whether it be casualty, whether it be new tricks on BBC. I don't, I don't, I don't mind. And, and it, yes, it you know, maybe the strategy made me saturate myself slightly in terms of like roles and stuff, but I was able to like work with different directors, different crews, different locations and put myself in different environments that I'm, I became comfortable to, I became comfortable to pressure. And then even with like short films, before Sharo, we did, uh, we've done like three short films before this with Fully Focus. Yeah. And um, why I love short films so much is that you have three days to build a character, to to make him feel real, you know? So, and sometimes it, it, there's a film called Drawn Out that I worked on with Fully Focus. And I had, the, I, was only, I was only actually filming for three days. Mm. Um, and sorry, three scenes, not even three days. I had three scenes across the whole film. So if you watch the film again, I've only got three scenes. But again, it was my task in terms of the pressure was to build a character in three scenes that makes him feel real. Uh, and and yeah, like 4D. So uh, again, when it comes to, sorry, to answer your question, again, with, with Sharo and Kyle, um, it was just the same thing. Like my approach to performances and characters and stuff is like one I have to make sure that the you know the emotion and I, I want that resonance to feel real I, I believe like when you're watching something it's, it's uh, I mentioned this in the, in the previous podcast I did but it's all in the eyes you know for me in terms of emotion and when you capture you when when I find myself that when I'm when I'm in there and I'm, I'm in that say that place with that character yeah. there's so many things that I, I I'm not thinking about I'm actually just doing based on instinct because you know your body I think I've, I wrote about this when I was 16, like emotion is the the hardest thing to manipulate basically. And I feel like when I tap into something real, then it, for me, the emotion, it takes me almost like on a roller coaster where how I speak and how I say things, it just, it just does its own thing. It's a bit like, you know, when you're angry or when you're crying, you know, if in fact, you know, when you are crying, the, the first thing you do is you deny it, you push that emotion down. And I think when you push that, it obviously has that, that kind of like equal and opposite reaction. And then, that emotion overtakes itself because it, it you know overrides whatever you're trying to push down basically and then that that forms obviously tears and and that thing there but again it's not to sh I'm not trying to show you that I'm upset it's just a feeling that I'm trying to hide so it's all these little things that I've been doing I guess for like the last like six to eight years before I did it shower story and so when it came to that role even like I remember having to have a conversation with Rapman because it was Javan who recommended me to like to play opposite him. Raps hasn't, you know, he wasn't sure whether or not I could do it. And I think upon meeting him and had a conversation, I had 101 questions for him about the character to, to try and understand more of Kyle and, and to kind of like create a backstory. And I think um, Raps has said this before, like I think he saw 
my uh my determination and, and hard work basically and ethic wise to to see that I could I could take on this role and this character. And yeah, it's, it's I feel like Kyle is one of my proudest some of my, my proudest moments because it's it, I got messages from people, you know, uh friends, close friends, and family, everyone just like I don't recognize you at all. And obviously as an actor, that's the biggest compliment you can receive, right? Um, and then, you know, it was another step too far when I'm going to certain areas around London and people think I'm actually really, you know, from the roads and I'm about that life and stuff. And I'm really Kyle. And I'm like, you know, it's just it's an act, you know, it's not it's not it's not real. But again, I, I do take it very seriously when I am portraying any character that I'm approaching. I think it's just I have so much respect for the project, for the writer, for for just for the character. I just really want to make sure that when I'm when I'm watching it you know I think I'm my biggest critique as well I can tell my I can tell when I'm watching something of myself where you know either whether I you know I believe myself or I don't and I just want to I would like to watch back the content I make and feel like yes I I, I believe this 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 character I I don't even recognize myself I think that's that's the biggest uh, task really it's it's almost a battle it's a competition uh, and also a challenge of Percy versus Percy you know nothing else really I'm not trying to I'm not trying to like do anything for anything else. Like, you know, say it be for like, accolades or, you know, say it even be for a tent. Like, no, I don't really care. I, I just care about just embodying a character, whether it be a short film, a big Netflix feature film, you know, a series. It doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter how big or small the project is. I just want to make sure that I do an honest job of portraying whatever I'm doing, basically. So, yeah, that's that's where I think it comes from. I love that. I love that. Thank you, man. Um, and I guess when we look at production, right, from a producer's, from a producing perspective, mm. how did you, where did you learn the, I guess it's more the, how did your practical understanding of producing grow? Yeah. Yeah. Because now you can, you guys on your own can go and do a feature or go and do yeah, yeah, yeah. that is TV standard. Do you know? What yeah, I, mean? I, I think it was uh, just like, you know, something me and Javan talk about a lot, a lot of times, yeah, and and even D as well back in the day was like, we felt like our route in terms of creating content from Man on the Wall and on, on our journey, even as 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 artists and, and actors and everything else, basically, we it almost feels as though our route is the long route. And why I say long route is because nothing was kind of handed to us we had to like work for everything basically and even like speaking to like previous mentors a lot of the times people did stuff like they stepped in to become you know directors or writers and producers after acting is because they had to that you know do do it yourself otherwise there's this sort of like there's nothing else out there we have to create the solution to the problem we might as well you know create the change that we want to see and that was a part of it and also it just fell naturally like I, you know it was it wasn't it wasn't a choice of like, I wanted to be a producer. To be honest with you, I didn't really know what a producer does very early on, but we were doing it. We didn't, we just didn't realize that this was, this, this was the label. So in regards to like Man on the Wall, we were, you know, setting up our, all of our shoots. We were organizing the schedules. We were, we were doing call sheets. You know, this is when we were 18 years old. We, we were going to BBC on set there. Javan was doing Casualty. I'm doing Wizards. And then I would just literally study the call sheet and then adopt it and make it my own call sheet for Man on the Wall. Even though we didn't need it, it was just good practice. Like I wanted to, I wanted to raise the levels every single time. Every single time we were filming, it would take us like a month to shoot an episode. So there was so much like organization that had to go into it. I was also filming Wizards uh, Monday to Friday. So we can only shoot Man on the Wall uh, for the weekends. And so we had to use our time wisely. We had to be so efficient with everyone's time because we were getting so much free stuff and people volunteering and things like that. So, you know, we couldn't fail. We couldn't drop anything. The ball couldn't drop. So me and Javan just became so obsessive with just making sure that, the, you know, the detail was was always there because we, we had, you know, shoots that didn't go to plan. And, you know, we had people that came to set crew-wise that maybe didn't charge batteries or whatever it was. And it just, it killed us because it delayed you know, the, the, from, from the original plan. And that's the biggest thing with us is that when we were young, as even as young as 18, we had a big, you know, our, we had a plan. Like the plan was, we we knew what we wanted to do. Like the Wayne Brothers in America, we wanted to go out and create, you know, even after Man and it was like, we're going to create loads of films. We're going to do a TV show here, we're gonna do a film here, do this, do that. So every day and every moment spent was uh, a day closer to us getting to where we are today, for example's sake. And that's why we were so... Uh, particular and and so obsessive with 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 that type of detail. So to also answer your question, when we started to now take on the role as producers, I guess because we were in front of camera, 
I'm observing, you know, as I'm on set in all of these different types of projects that I've done, I'm observing just the crew. I'm, I'm observing, and I'm making mental notes of what I would do if I was to change things. Mm. You know, I might, you know, oh, you know, for example, sake, I might want to have more of an inclusive team to do makeup and hair because as actors, it's frustrating for us to have, you know, come to set and, you know, I have to come with my set, my hair made, or, or even I have to, you know, be in a chair with someone who doesn't know what they're doing with my dreadlocks, and it, it just mm. takes away from me as an actor because now I'm stressed out about that or whatever it is. So there were so many little things, or it could be with the lighting team or the catering. You know, if the catering's good, then the crew are good. You know, if if um if this department's happy with this, and then so I started to pick up all of these little things that people were unhappy about, and I was like, okay, cool. If I'm a producer, this is what I would do, mm-hmm. and uh, and also this is how I would want to build my sets and everything. All the best projects I've been up a bit been a part of have have always had the secret ingredient of love, right? And I don't mean that in a corny way. I'm serious. I'm talking about when we're so passionate about the project that we're trying to create and you've got all the crew engaged as well as your cast. Honestly, I feel like that's the thing that makes it just go to a whole new level in terms of it transcends. When we did Shara Story, we were filming 17 hours, you know, each day to try and get that 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 project done or whatever it was. So uh, and but that's the passion and the creative, you know, driving force for myself, Javan, Simon, you know, Rita and 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 yeah, raps as well. So it's like all of us knew what was at stake and why we wanted to make sure that this was perfect. Um, and so uh, uh, the biggest ingredient for me is making sure that there's a happy, a healthy environment, you know, no toxicity, um, try and, you know, help out people wherever you can, try and be nice to people, you know, make sure that there is that respect there across the whole crew and things like that. And obviously main, make sure that the standards of the levels of what everyone, so everyone who's a part of this, we all know what we're trying to do here. This is not just a job. We're coming here to like, you know, make some, make some stuff happen. And I don't, that's one thing I don't, that's my non-negotiable. Like if it's crew or if it's any part of the team, you know, I'm very quick to, and I could sniff it out very quickly as well. You know, if someone isn't, up to standard or, or not you know like bringing what I need like I'm very like I'll have a conversation with the rest of my you know my my partners at the table you know hey look there's, there's a department here that I just need to just keep a close eye on so I'm very intuitive and I use my initiative when it when we know where it matters and stuff and sorry to, uh, lastly to finish your question this is, well, no just speak just speak yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's needed, it's even, needed. Uh, even some of the projects that me that me and the boys did like the weekend film uh from back in the day yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that film had some issues, you know, off camera uh, in terms of finishing up the film. Mm. And in fact, it was myself, Jovan and our team that took the film over from the guys and we finished it basically. And we had no idea how to finish a feature, you know, but that was where I picked up the phone. I called Fiona Lamptey, uh, you know, when she was uh, producing at the time, Fruit Tree. Mm. I said, Fiona, I need your help. Like I, we, I just worked with Fiona recently at this time as well and Tickle Monster. I said, you know, I have no idea what I'm doing here, but do you have anybody who can help us with post-production and sound design and et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, just through conversations and, and asking questions to, you know, with the relevant people, I built up, you know, uh, okay, this is how I do it now. You know, this is the model. I, you know, go to the post house, get the sound mix done, the cinema mix and okay, fine, fine, fine. And then now I, I've got that skill set. you know? So although it was frustrating for us at the time to have to like, take on that film and produce it ourselves at the, at the end, you know, we had, we had to, because again, like I said to you earlier, we had to make sure that, you know, everything touches, you know, turns to gold, uh, to, to gold, sorry. Um, but we were so happy the fact that we had learned something so, so new and so, uh, so important for our journey moving forward. So when it came to any of the other films that we're, you know, we're doing now, we, you know, we have the confidence now to, to obviously approach them and produce them. So across everything we've ever done, you know, even if I'm just the actor, I'm still a part of it. You know, I'm st- even if I'm at, my name's not the producer, I don't care. You know, I don't I'm, I don't need the credit to be able to be a part of helping facilitate what's happening, basically, to make sure that this is as good as it can be. Again, you know, it goes back to the core thing I said to you earlier. Like, if our name's attached to this, man, we have to make sure that, you know, it's credible. And it's almost like I do feel this... Um, this relationship with the audience, you know, when people do recognise our work or do recognise us in the street... I have this, I feel like I owe it to them to make sure that what they see from us is is amazing. So like, you know, whether it is Does a Shoe Fit for Foot Asylum or, or, or you know, in the pink courtroom for PLT or if it's a film or narrative or whatever it is, or documentary, you know, I, I just want to make sure that, you know, I, I, I love the fact that people can come to us and be like, oh, wow, everything you guys do is at a certain level. And that is honestly like, that's, that's the biggest reward. And that's what we've always wanted basically for, you know, reputation wise. I can see it. I can see. I can see. <laughs> you guys are 
where you are like the passion yeah <laughs> is yeah. been there like that is like to take to take a project like the weekend and not and know where you want to go mm. but not know how to get there yeah it's only passion that can get you there oh a hundred million percent absolutely i mean i think for us sometimes as well we've been through so much obstacles yeah. and so much hardship in terms of getting projects over the line like I don't think there's anything that you could give us that we haven't been through before or we would be scared of because of how hard things were in the past. You know, I think the days of doing Man on the Wall, editing Man on the Wall, um, back when the software isn't as new as it is today, even back to, you know, the computers we have today isn't as fast. You know, we, we spent, you know, I think weeks like editing up to like crazy hours in the morning editing. And like having to like just keep yourself awake, like push, you don't want to sleep because everyone else is like so passion, passionate on this project. Like I don't want to be the weakest link on this team. That was hard. That was so grueling, like not sleeping for like weeks to try and just finish the edit and stuff. So when it comes to the stuff that we're doing now, we're fortunate to have, you know, the post house or the editors and we're paying people for this, that, the other. So I'm not like, yeah, just, I think Koja said to us a long time ago, just the stripes that we've earned, like doing what we've done and and I you know go back to saying that the long route and not the, mm. not the short route, basically it's given us this this character that just you can't take it away from us you can take away you could take away the whole business from us tomorrow if you wanted to you can honestly but the information and the, the wisdom that we have that that's priceless and that's what we've always wanted basically I love this I love this <laughs> okay. so as 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 things became like serious for you guys acting wise yeah and- I'm going to talk about the business now because um, mm. like all this passion has now you, you guys now have, have a business, right. Exactly. Um, but when, when the business was growing and you, your acting careers, like both of you, you and Javan was like getting really serious. How did you ensure that like the business still grew? Man. Um, there was a time, so this, let me go take you back to 2017. So we just moved into an office in Old Street um, before the one, I think the, this is maybe the one that you came to, the one before, but basically okay. um, it was in Unilad's building and they kindly offered us a space on their, on one of the floors that they had and um, moved in there. We were building the company. We were making money through Facebook monetization to build up the wall of comedy. Mm-hmm. And then we were using that money to invest back into the company. So we built up a social team. Then we started to do original productions because we had a vision of wanting to commission our own work. So mm-hmm. that's where we met Young Philly and, you know, commissioned the questions and things like that, basically. Mm-hmm. Then um, it was the key thing for us, I think, was the fact that me and Javan grew a solid team. And and I think that's the, the thing I always like to focus on when I answer this question. It's just the team. Like there was, a you know, uh, Vashti, Javan's cousin, she's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people know Vashti in a lot of circles and um, she just she can do everything, man. She's so versatile. She's even produced and stuff like that, basically, in the past. Mm-hmm. There was a kid, there's a guy called Junior as well, who we uh, got into our team. Um, Sam, who is our head, you know, was uh, he's our head of entertainment right now in our company. Yeah. Uh, that's when we met him. And so we've been working with Sam for the last seven, eight years now. Um, but we, we just grew a solid team, a solid team of people who, um, believed in the vision, believed in us, basically, and were able to kind of hold the fort. And the big piece that me and Javan were missing was Taff. You know, once we met Taff, we met him through him working with Young Philly on a campaign with Game, and Philly mm-hmm. did something with Cadet and and and, and those guys. Uh, we had a, like a brand meeting with with Game as well to talk about what kind of content we could do. And it's so funny because at the time, um, the lady who was in charge of marketing for Game, is, she she works for Ann Summers. And now, you know, we have that relationship with Ann Summers doing loads of content there. Uh, and yeah, we, you know, Taff came to this meeting as well. And, um, you know, we spoke to, you know, Game and tried to see what, you know, what we could do. N- nothing really came from the meeting. However, we were like, who's this guy? You know, who's this guy called Taff, man? He's, he's like, he, he knows what he's talking about, you know? And if funny enough, like he came to the office to, to drop us like a, a little gift or whatever, just to welcome us and, you know, kind of like, you know, looking forward to working together. And um, I think him and Javan got into some conversations about all the comedy in the business. 
Taff was say, you know, just like out of curiosity, he just said to Javan, you know, do you mind if I just take a look at, you know, you just what, what's happening? Because I, I work in finance and I could probably help you guys and, and stuff like that. And to be honest with you, you know, that's not mine and Javan's like the strong, strong foot. It's not mine anyway. Javan's more, I'd say, like more in terms of the business side of things. But yeah. He took a look and yeah, he saw that, you know, if we didn't change things quick enough, basically, like we were, you know, there was a few things that we weren't doing correctly, you know, to kind of sustain the business. Yeah. And night Taff was working with us, basically, you know, um, we kind of had a meeting, spoke to him, you know, he really wanted to help us, you know, that help from, you know, just volunteering kind of thing turned into something quite serious. And he became quite passionate about what we, what we was doing. And then, yeah, by the time I got to, doing innocence on netflix and i was filming in norway javan got a role in the purge and javan had to be in new york filming that at the same time so we had to just both of us be out the country whilst we had like people like i said vashti sam and more importantly yeah like taff like holding down the fort basically for us and um uh funny enough at this time our, our facebook page got deleted from facebook um due to music copyright and um, there was no warning, no kind of, um, you know, hey guys, like delete this content. Otherwise, it's, you, you know, you know how it works and stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah. get and stuff. So overnight, we just got an email um, to delete our page of 8 million followers. And that was the way that we were generating income. So whilst I was in Innocence and uh, Javan was yeah, doing the purge, we both oh, basically, we both had to, yeah, we both had to close the company um, overnight and, uh we had to like, you know, I had a list of people I had to contact that worked for us. And so did Javan. We made all the phone calls and had to let everyone go, basically saying that, you know, their jobs are redundant because we no longer have a business, basically. And that's probably one of the hardest moments of our business life. This was 20, actually 2018 now. And um, myself and Javan then started to work on Shower Story at the same time. And this is where it was so mad for us because Shara's story was blowing up like crazy. And then at the same time, our baby that we had been working on for the last six, seven years was suffering. You know, we didn't know what to do with all the comedy. And so um, my, between myself, Taff and Javan, we then decided that it was probably the right opportunity to maybe look at going into production because we did so well with Shara's story and it, you know, did, you know, did well for Raps's career and everything else. We were like, we want to do more of this. We don't just want to do, we don't just want to do comedy anymore. We want to do more stuff. And also very, uh, this is the very early days of Foot Asylum as well, where we started to work with those guys and collaborate. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we, we made a choice to basically uh, change, uh, well, uh, and evolve, but basically open up Wall of Productions. And then that, you know, subsequently is now, you know, we're, we're the Wall of Entertainment because we want to service, uh, multiple things wall of talent you know wall of comedy wall of productions it all sits underneath wall event um and then yeah we just we had to hustle you know we we worked and you know the main relationship that really kicked things off was foot asylum mm -hmm. uh, you know we we went from just creating one you know random video with those guys and mm -hmm. you know, eventually built up a relationship where it was ongoing uh to be to become more sustainable that turned into like a retainer for the year and that was the first like wow it's the first big contract that we can build off the back of this basically and then yeah where we had no team and you know no one working for us it was just the three of us again we then slowly started to build up again and you know we were like four people in the start of 2019 in an office in old street and the roundabout i think yeah that's i'm not sure if that's the one you went to and then yeah that team grew and grew up until um the end of yeah 2019 we had probably about like 10 to 12 people working for us basically so yeah, man, we grew quite quickly working with different brands and stuff and um, trying to trying to re, yeah, redesign everything. And then the pandemic hit. <laughs> so, um, yeah, again, we had to go through another storm of just holding onto the ship and holding onto, you know, the company and the business again in terms of mm -hmm. our relationships. And we found a way to make the, the, the branded content work still where we were mm -hmm. shooting, you know, uh, basically sending the kit to the talent and directing them over Zoom, basically. Yeah. And all recording what we needed for the brand and they were still able to upload content but it was just you know it was just lockdown content basically and in fact that was probably you know a pretty peak moment for for social media because of course tiktok you know blew up in that time and yeah. and you know, people were watching content you know more so than, than ever isn't it so i think it really helped because of course of yeah people just watching social so yeah sorry bro yeah to cut to, to, to the future where we are today yeah we we survived the pandemic and then from 2021 you know that was like okay cool let's, let's you know slowly get back up onto our feet 2022 was a really good for you, good year for us 
And then yeah, 23, I think, yeah, each year it's just been, you know, year on year growth, which is what you can ask for for as a business owner. And um, and more importantly, I think Taff, when we first set up, you know, all the productions, he said, you know, most small businesses die within the first five years, basically. And so I think a big thing for us was like, hey, we're not dying. We're, I'm looking at that five year mark and we're going to get there. And um, yeah, funny enough, I think next year would be the first, would be the fifth year, basically, that, you know, we, we've been alive with the wall of productions and the wall of entertainment for um of course wall of comedy has been there since you know 2015 yeah. but just to where we are now and our positioning and also just in terms of like everything we believed in you know what what we're doing now in terms of the content we're producing for brands mm. this is the stuff that me and Javan and and the, all of us were talking about back in 2017 we saw this we we told brands we said you know if you can get I don't know. We told labels. We we went to every label in 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 night. Where is it? Uh, Kensington. Just talking about the fact that if you put your artists and your talent in our shows, this is how we keep them relevant. Because it's not just an album that they need to to find relevancy with their audience. This is where we can keep them hot throughout the whole year. Because we knew through the memes and stuff that we're uploading, they're getting millions of views every day. So. If, if there's a meme or if there's a show that we can kind of obviously cut down in terms of snippets and release, then, you know, it's, again, it's, this is the new style of billboard. Yeah, so yeah, we can yeah. understand how they couldn't see this stuff, basically. So, um, yeah, we were pitching back in 2017, 2018. And I guess, yeah, like I said, Foot Asylum were the first brand to kind of take that plunge and take that risk. And it's obviously paid dividends for them because now they're on 2 million subs and, you know, they've, they've opened up more stores across London, which is what their plan was originally before working with us. Yeah, so the content has made them what we wanted to do, which has made them made them cool, popular culture, basically. Mm -hmm. made them, you know, and even now, kids don't even, like, think about them just as a fashion store. Like, they're an entertainment hub. You know, I'm trying to say that they're a Netflix for young people, you know, just on YouTube because it's content that they deliver that Netflix Netflix isn't serving or BBC is not serving. Um, but and, and, you know, of course, to you know, today now, you know, we're working with other brands such as, you know, PLT, Boohoo Man, JBL, um, Channel 4.0 is a big relationship that we have right now. Uh, working with those guys, they're amazing. They get it. And um, yeah, you know, I'm so proud, like we've been working with, with those guys for, I'd say, two years. Last year was like the first, like where we like, you know, churning content and stuff. Yeah. Obviously working with like Harry Pinero and Secret Source with Chunks and Worst in Class and stuff like that, basically. But yeah, Channel 4.0 sitting on 200k subs now. So again, it's just evidence of how, um, you know, building up the, 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 the client's channels and becoming an entertainment hubs can really help them and you make their audience engaged all year out all year yeah through we're 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 all really proud of what you guys are doing man because mm -hmm. um, yeah it's 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 professional it's you guys are hard working um and yeah i just i just i just love it i love it with <laughs> me from a business angle everything is amazing it's amazing Thanks um what i wanted to know right is yeah. given your hard work your humble learning attitude and your grit right when you get like a role acting wise mm. how do you prepare for it and i ask that because you don't play around like from what we see on screen so i'm sure yeah. so many people they want to know like all right you give Purcell a role then what's he doing what's he doing <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, it's such a good question. It's so it's kind of hard to like answer in a very linear way. But mm -hmm. you know, with with yeah, with every I think with the bigger projects, and it was so nice when I did. I came by on Netflix. I, I um, it was nice to work with George, uh, George McKay, because yeah. he's such a seasoned actor. He's been working since he was young. He's worked in films that I admire. You know, Nineteen Seventeen was something I watched and I was blown away. I was blown away by it just. I could see how hard that performance was. That is grueling, you know? The the, the style of the, the, the film, if you haven't seen it already, mm -hmm. it's almost it's almost one take, basically. Of course, there's cut points and stuff, and um, there are moments where they probably had breaks and stuff. But when I watched the behind the scenes, they rehearsed probably about a couple of months before they actually started, started shooting. So everything had to be on a particular timing so as they're holding the steady cam you know they're passing the camera to the next camera up basically to continue the shot that's when i was like wow this is like mastery in terms of craft because yeah. it's not it's it's much as we know of acting it's not just about saying some lines you know there's so many other variables that you've got to take into consideration such as like just hitting your mark you know working with the focus puller to not move too quickly maybe or it might be 
I don't know, the DOP needs to light you in a certain way, but it's it's awkward because you want to you wanna walk over here and walk there, but you have to find compromises, basically. So on a shoot of 1917, that was so uh, particular. It was so nice for me to speak to George. And, and when we worked together, I asked him a bunch of questions. And in fact, the one thing I've always was so intrigued about was almost like, what's on the other side? Like actors who are performing at that level, like what do they do in their process? And um, after speaking to George, I realised like I was doing the process that you know i thought i i thought was sort of like oh what is that holy grail what is the the process that i'm not doing right now and in fact in fact all these years i have been doing it basically i just needed to try to trust my instinct that i was doing it the way that you know i guess that way the way that i'm supposed to there's not really a right or wrong way in terms of process anyway it's, it's your way and that's one thing i say to actors all the time we're all different like you know the truth of me is like i suffer as well with anxiety definitely with, with, with anxiety issues like it's such a weird one to, to describe, but it's like my anxiety comes through when um, I'm uncomfortable and also I don't know what I'm doing. When I when I don't know the, the script enough or the character enough or whatever's happening on the day, I, I start to lose confidence in, in, in myself. I start to doubt and question things and second guess things. My instinct sl slowly starts to go away. So um it's very good for me to, to, to know what it is I'm doing. So, I, you know, like... I study as much as I can in terms of like my, my character and the script. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm probably, I, I know there's other actors who, who probably even do more work than me when it comes to script work. You know, I, I think I, I take it as far as I, as I feel I'm supposed to, then I allow the natural instinct to, 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 to kick in basically. I, as long as I know why I'm saying it, where I'm going for my character, what my motives are and all of this, you know, and what we're trying to get from these scenes and then, and also just the film in general, um, then I just allow myself to play. I think playing is such a beautiful, such an important part of acting because I think when I was younger, I used to beat myself up about performances. Like if I what didn't say my line, like if I, I don't know, missed a line or whatever it was, like constantly just beating myself up because of that kind of perfectionism that I spoke about earlier. And where I had to change things was, I knew it wasn't sustainable for me to continue this way. And so going to therapy and working on myself and stuff and just enjoying, just, just being pe present with life, I slowly started to remember, like, as much as I love acting, it's not the be all and end all. It's not, it doesn't make Perseverasco, you know, there's, there's, there's other parts of myself that make Perseverasco. So I don't need to be so harsh on myself if I don't get something right. Even if I do a role and it doesn't come out the way I want it to or performance wise, or I don't know, a critic was to say something mad about me. It's fine. It's okay. You know, I tried. And that's, that's the biggest thing I take with me with every character and every project is that as long as you try P and you gave it your all, then that's what matters basically. And yeah, it's just that thing where when I am doing certain scenes, um, I'm, I'm always just searching just for the truth, for honesty, constantly, you know, like I don't mind a director telling me, I just want, I'm, you know, like I, 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 I get frustrated when directors are trying to sort of like maybe, uh, um, you know, uh, protect my feelings maybe, you know what I mean? Like not to say I'll be completely harsh, but just, just let me know where I'm missing it, you know, because I'm a very, uh, I feel like as I'm processing the information, I'm feeling the emotion basically. So when you're telling me where the what you how you want this the, the character to, to feel maybe or what you want from me in a certain scene i'm processing I'm, I'm actually taking that in like in in like physically physically basically i think that's the way i learn and um yeah when it comes to certain big scenes as well like that that's my that's where i go into a certain zone basically that's like you know percy time because basically like it might be again situations in the past where i've had to deal with pressure in performing you know, with no money or no budget, man on the wall, we have to do things in one take, maybe, wherever it is. Going back to the short films, as, as like I mentioned, you know, we, we don't have much time to, to get certain things done. We have this window of opportunity. So I've almost conditioned myself and um, I'm almost programmed now where I, I enjoy and thrive when, you know, I say we're under pressure, like the, you know, second AD is like, oh, the, sorry, the first AD is like, look, we've got 30 minutes to get this scene done. That That's where I come alive. And, and, and more so the fact that, um, I'm I, I'm going through the the beats in my head. I'm processing like I'm even as they're setting up. I'm I'm I am already where I'm supposed to be. If that makes sense. Yes. Like, I, I don't wait. Oh, until I get onto in my trip. Like from the moment I get to my trailer to like as I'm going make up when I come back to my trailer. Like I've got all of my little things that I do that I'm preparing for, and it's almost like a button that I'm I'm slowly about to push. It's almost like even as I'm doing something say emotional. Um, I'm almost like turning the temperature up slowly, basically. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So even as we get in closer and closer, and probably sometimes even the crew show, um, I give the crew like because the crew for me are such a 
an important part of like the the piece, like the 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 kind of ensemble because they film every day with different different projects and stuff. They seen this stuff all the time. So where I can do something, can I feel like the crew are engaged? That's why I'm like, okay, cool, I've got them because they they're, they're very like not to say they're desensitized, but or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. But it's just I get it. You know, you're you're, you're back to back with work, isn't it? So um, I use the crew rehearsal sometimes to kind of like again like play and experiment, and then yeah, like you know just go, you know, work on it, talk to the director. I, I think about, you know, I talk to them about the shots and stuff and the style of how they're going to get something in. Mm. Then, of course, when it comes to the, to the wide and, you know, then I'm playing, then I'm really like, you know, pushing, you know, where I can and stuff like that. And then, of course, there's that little bit of, you know, maybe I might just reserve just a little bit in the tank just for the close-ups and things like that, basically, just, just so I can push it to where I need to get to. Because, of course... I've done it in the past where, you know, you completely exhaust yourself and you're tired and, or it could be a thing where, I don't know, this is the small things that people don't think about when it comes to acting. Like, you know, we might break for lunch in the middle of a scene, you know, so I've got to have my lunch, come back to that emotional resonance that I, I want, I once had and and tap into it and get, and get there again. You know what I'm trying to say in terms of where, wherever I was. So all of these things I'm, I'm thinking about, they're so, they're so minuscule to me or to other people, sorry, but they're very, very important to me like as part of my process to like getting somewhere with something basically so yeah it doesn't matter like I said to you like um it doesn't matter if it's a short film or if it's a you know someone's paying me a hundred pound on or for, if it's for, for, for free like it's for me it's, it's it's just an exciting challenge to to see how I can get to that place again and maybe there might be something different I want to try you know maybe there might be something different I want to change you know what I'm trying to say like it's just I just want to just constantly you know um keep learning like I said earlier like yeah, man, it's this this thing I've always said to people when I was younger, like I've always looked at learning like a fruit, right? And if it, when a fruit ripens, the next part of the process that it rots, right? And that's why I look at myself as a fruit. I don't like to say that I've ripe, I'm, you know, ripe or I don't think I've made it or I am the best, you know, in terms of like I've hit that level in my craft. Like if I can constantly tell myself there's areas that I can keep improving, I feel like I can keep on getting better and better and better over time, basically, you know. So that's the way like I like to see it as man, you know. Oh man, the, the <laughs> fruit, the fruit. Oh man. I love that. I love that. I'm gonna take yeah. that and use it. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> um two last questions because yeah. of- because because of your time is um like what advice would you give to a hungry actor yes where you were 10 years ago Mm. um and wants to create their own work but it's like today's climate yeah of course man of course yeah i love that question um i think the biggest thing that we always say to people is if you're trying to uh create your own work especially create your own work is to network across you know, network across, don't network above in terms of like, look around you. Like, I think when we were doing Man on the Wall, um, we were only using and working with people who also were on the come up, who also needed the opportunity and the experience basically to further further build on their skill sets. Mm -hmm. People like Ricardo, who's a DOP, you know, he's an amazing DOP. Freddie, who's directing, you know, Man on the Wall. Uh, Isla, who did the corner shop as well on youtube like all of these guys like they were also in the same space as us and so it was easier for us to come together and work on a certain project and i think um even in today's climate there's so much more opportunity of just the fact of exposure of of um you know engagement with the audience and accessibility because like with, with when we were doing stuff we didn't have instagram we didn't have tiktok you know we had youtube and even as a platform uh, uh, like youtube unless you are a fan of something, you know, you're going onto YouTube specifically to watch, I'm typing in the person that I like with TikTok, you're seeing people that you don't even know. You, you didn't even know about yesterday, but they just pop up on your timeline. The same thing, a little bit with Instagram as well, that can happen in, in the same kind of way. So it's easier or even just that share button, like that, that little like envelope thing that you can send straight to someone on WhatsApp or send straight to someone on, on TikTok, you know, this is, it uses to your advantage. Like, even now I've realized that the, the psychology of these social media apps, sometimes we just like sharing something that's funny just to like, just to make that person that we love smile. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, sometimes I'm, I look at some memes and I'm just, I just want to share this to my girlfriend and be like, Hey, like, you know, I just want to, I just want to see the laughing emojis from her. But, but this is what I'm saying. Like, it's like, if you see something funny in terms of content and you're an actor and you're making sketches, say with your friends, whatever it is, people want to find the new thing and they want to share that thing and that, that experience with someone else, basically. So there's so much 
um opportunity there but yeah going back to like the kind of process i'd say is like yeah definitely network across um if you're trying to like get an agent maybe i would say look at creating your own work basically you know like even me even regardless of what i've done like i'm still uh in a position where i i feel like there's there's more people that i can show uh, in terms of like casting directors or producers directors that I've got the range or the versatility for other projects. So, you know, I'm talking to my guys right now, um, you know, like Ricardo being one of those guys, like we're talking about setting up a, a shoot, a shoot day. I've written some scripts. Mm -hmm. Let's just shoot some scenes. Let's just release it on socials. Let's just see what happens. You never know what could happen. Someone might look at it, watch it. Oh, there's something here. Like we'd love to talk to you guys more about the evolution of this. It could, it could birth into a short film or a feature. You just never know. Or, it could just gain a new fan, someone else who's a casting director that might watch that scene of that I did and be like, oh, actually, I've seen this thing that Percy did. And like even that, sometimes, honestly, like I've got roles where I, I know it's out of sight, out of mind. Like I know I've done something online and just whatever's happening. And it happens to me. Sometimes I'm when I'm casting something, I, all I could think about is the actors that I've seen on my social media, you know, whether they, they've done some type of work or they've posted some kind of picture whatever it is, but they just, they happen to be in my kind of like um, my peripheral, you know, yeah. of, of when I'm thinking about project, because you know how it goes as a producer, or, you know, you're working on something, you, that time, I've got to quickly find someone and also find someone that I trust. And that's the thing about creating your own work is like, you know, sometimes the biggest thing is, is just potential. People don't know, obviously, what your potential is and that could be due to whatever the case may be and also sometimes it's more, maybe it's not even on them to see that potential maybe it's on us to show them what our potential is and that's what I mean by creating your own work and put it online is someone can watch something can be like oh yeah like I can see that you have this this type of range so yeah going back to you know if you don't have an agent maybe create some stuff like Sebastian's got you know upshot reels I keep telling every actor that I meet that talks to me about wanting to become an actor or want some advice go and book a shoot with him <laughs> right second right now right this second because that he's got the he's got such an amazing platform he can shoot the thing for you make it look a, 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 to a, a high premium quality and that that's your show reel you know, I'm trying to say like that can be the thing that you can send to an agent that can they can then they can see your performance and go, oh, so maybe you didn't get the big role in casualty or in Netflix and you don't you haven't shown that you can be a lead in something, but you have the opportunity to create that scene or, or shoot that scene basically and send it to them. And so they can they can see you, you know, in that role and what you can do, basically. And lastly, I just say is just to keep on honing on your craft. I think, you mm. know, even the, uh, my favorite actors and people that like inspire me every single day. I, I see that they just don't stop working. They just don't stop like perfecting what they do and they get better and better and better. And um, and also collaboration. Like I think I've learned the most because I've worked with so many different types of people, whether it be directors, whether it be producers or other actors like and writers too. Like I just, I pick up so much information from so many people, you know, uh, one person that I know you're working with, who I absolutely adore and I'm, I'm inspired by is Sheila Nortley. Like she's just, yeah. she's like, <sighs> Sheila is like, oh, I can't describe Sheila in, in words, bro. Like she's just, she's so, she's so amazing. She's so amazing. But that's what I'm saying. When I met Sheila, I was like, wow. Like I've met, I've met someone, you know, who is, yeah, on a higher plane. I can't even like, she's on a higher plane and it was nice. It was so refreshing. And it was, she, she taught me so much through our conversations just through us hanging out and, and chilling together like I just there's so many things that she taught me about you know one thing that she she told me a quote was like cinema is is uh it's, it's an empathy machine and I've taken that quote with me everywhere it just it hits and I've always struggled to communicate why I love this thing so much and it's that it has the ability to transform people and change people so um just hanging out with with different types of collaborators and stuff is going to help you also I think doesn't matter if you're in different fields it will just help you nourish you in another field as well and i think yeah that will help you man, man. Man. um thank you thank you purcell you have poured out man you <laughs> nah, nah, nah. today you've poured <laughs> out thank you god bless you man god that you. was guys listen <laughs> listen i don't know what else you want um <laughs> Yeah, you've got someone really top tier here in um in so many fields and understand so many different crafts, but also how they interlink. Um, and he's really just poured out from his heart in terms of look, this is how I'm doing it. 
this is I'm passionate I continue learning I'm never going to get there but I'm not going to beat myself up about that like I don't know what more you want thank you Purcell thank you no thank you I just want to I just want to give you your flowers right now bro I just want to say thank you for setting up this platform for us to have an opportunity to speak and and to give our voice lend our voice to people who need it and just for even us this this helps like i'll you know looking at your platform listening to other actors also speak other directors that i'm also fans of and just you know you creating a network for all of us to be t- together in is it's, it's amazing and um i just want to thank you for the opportunity to speak today and give the flowers as well to my family you know um they've supported me through thick and thin to get me this far everyone from my business partners Taff and Javan to everyone in our team all of entertainment um we've had so many people help us for, throughout our journey it, it's been it's been a village to raise us you know and you know lastly to, to my to my partner as well you know it's, it's amazing to be with someone who is also um a big fan of you know of what I do and is so supportive and um because sometimes in the dark days it's hard to see you know that what we're doing is making sense so um yeah you know and especially for our mental health it's, it's so hard it's so hard as actors and 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 artists to, to kind of keep on pushing sometimes but you know just hold on to your people hold on to your people who love you and who who shower you with love and, and hold you up there basically that's what I'd say to every single person like everyone even just one of my obviously my main collaborator is Javan yeah our friendship man I always say this I'm gonna say it to everyone you know that that is watching this like my friendship with him is the reason why you know, we've built everything we built because we've been loyal, we've been honest, we've communicated and, you know, we've just been through things together through thick and thin, you know, the hard days as, as well. And sometimes if you're going through something hard, it, it will get better. It will definitely get better. Trust me, just hold on. Don't give up. If you give up, that's when you allow those things and and those things to kind of to win, basically. And, and just don't do that. You have so much to show, you know, it's just a, mo- a matter of time a matter of a matter of time I can't describe to you moments where before I came by I was 18 months unemployed you know I got a role they told me to cut my hair for but you know my dreadlocks two weeks before filming it was just a horrible moment you know process wise and until I met Babak the director of I came by on Netflix and you know before my final audition he just said to me by the way I love your hair it just hit me it was like the 360 moment that I needed of like reassurance that I made the right choice and sometimes we don't know if we're making the right choice but believe me your gut will tell you and just to keep keep honoring your gut keep trusting that gut and yeah I, you know I just can't wait to see what what people you know do in the UK man let's elevate let's let's build this scene man let's let's do and create some magic so yeah anyone that wants to work with us I can't wait to work with you you just do you see that last those last few minutes just the honesty and the vulnerability wow that's a whole nother conversation in itself but I thank you thank you for doing that because that that's the side that a lot of people don't talk about um Mm. and struggle with individually on their own Mm. so like it's it's amazing for the the wider context of like having a girlfriend having a business partner having friends and mm-hmm. ah so yeah i'm gonna yeah. start talking but yeah no thank you Purcell. Yeah. that was amazing thank you p a true gent 